Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy Cosmos Server using Docker to manage not only your existing Docker containers, but any new Docker containers and services that you deploy in the future. As I just mentioned, I'm going to show you how you can deploy Cosmos, which is a UI that allows you to manage not only your existing Docker containers, but also any new ones, and you'll be able to see the resource usage and how your containers are going. So it's like a single pane of glass, start them, stop them all through here, but also it provides you like a marketplace so you can actually go through, find what you want to deploy, click, and away you go. You don't have to go to the command line or anything like that. Gives you multi-user support, MFA, all of that good stuff. So the structure of this video, we will have a look at the demo of Cosmos, just a really quick overview and then I'll show you how to get it deployed and then we'll take you through all the steps of the install and we'll do a bit of a in-depth view of Cosmos and that will be it. So what you're seeing here is the demo version of Cosmos. So this just gives you a good view. Now we can't do too much here because it's just a demo version, but it just gives you enough view to understand what we're going here, right? So these are applications that we can actually deploy if we go to the market on the left hand side here. You can see there's a whole marketplace, essentially like an app store, where you can deploy applications that you want. Now you can search for them, you can actually import compose files, so if you actually had a compose file that you know an application wasn't listed here you could click import compose file and just paste your compose file directly here or upload it so you don't just have to use their app store you can actually deploy your own applications here as well now the rest of the stuff on the left hand side i'm going to go over when we actually deploy it for ourselves so let's go do that now this is the documentation the official documentation for deploying cosmos now they're just using a single command here, a Docker run command for deploying Cosmos Server. Now, you can see here they specifically say don't use Docker Compose, Unraid Templates, Casa OS, or Portainer Stacks to deploy Cosmos because it won't work properly. Now, there will be a link in the description of this video to my document server uh, website where I show all of my documentation for the videos that I make and the Compose files and all of that. On that website, you're going to find this command here as well, but also a breakdown of all the flags that we're using here and why they're used, and also a reason and a bit of a description on why you know you don't necessarily want to use a compose or unraid templates or whatever for deploying Cosmos Server, just to give you a, a bit more information. And I'm not going to cover it here in the video, but if you're keen on understanding why and the reasons for these flags, check out my document server and it's all explained there. So it's pretty good. All we need to do is copy this command and we can deploy Cosmos server. Right, providing that you have Docker installed, I'm going to copy this command and jump to my server and we will deploy it. So this is my Electron Sandy server. This is just a sandbox server I have for doing tests and playing around. So we're going to use this to deploy it. Now, by default, Cosmos server runs on port 80 and 443. Depending on what services you're already running on your server, these could be used. So just keep that in mind. This is why I'm using just a dedicated uh, server for this, just because I know that those ports are used up on my other servers. So here's the command here. Again, a breakdown of what's happening in these uh, flags here will be explained in my documentation. A link is in the description. A key thing to note though is this one here. We're mounting the Docker socket onto the container. So that means the container has access to our host Docker socket where it can see the containers, interact with the containers and all of that good stuff. So that's where that key functionality is coming from. You can also see that we're just using the Cosmos server latest uh, image as well. So we're just going to hit enter here and we will deploy our container. So I hit enter. Now I already have the image pulled. If you don't, it will just take a little bit to pull that image down and then you're all good as well. We can make sure it's up and running. I'll just run a Docker PS and we will grep and we'll just look for Cosmos server. Uh, you can tell because that's the, the name here, Cosmos server. We'll just make sure that's up and running. And we can see 21 seconds ago, it's all, it was deployed and it's been up for 20 seconds. So it looks all good. Coming to the official documentation, it just says if you want to access Cosmos Server, you go over HTTP and the IP address of your server because again, by default, it's running on port 80 and 443. And there we go. So now we have hit the UI for setting up our Cosmos Server just by going to the IP address, as you can see at the top. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. So now what we can do is we can just follow through with the install wizard. So it's saying here, welcome. First of all, thanks a lot for trying out Cosmos and welcome to the setup wizard. It takes about two to three minutes to go through all of this. Now it's saying here, clean install, remove any existing config files. That's what, that's what we want. So we'll just leave that ticked and hit start. It's saying here, Cosmos is using Docker to run applications. It is optional, but Cosmos will run in a reverse proxy only mode if it cannot connect to Docker. 
I'm a bit confused by this because we actually needed Docker to actually deploy Cosmos. So uh, I, I guess maybe there's another way of deploying Cosmos. But anyway, uh, it's saying here Docker's installed, got a nice green tick, so we can just leave it as that. We'll hit next now. Now it's saying here, Cosmos is using our MongoDB database to store all the data. So it's saying this is optional, but if you want to be able to use UI and um, have users, you're going to need a database. So we've got a few options here. We could automatically create a secure database, supply our own one. So if we already had a database set up we wanted to use, you can do that here. Or you can actually just disable user management and UI altogether. We actually don't want that, so we're going to automatically create a secure database. We'll hit connect here. And what you can see, it's actually going to pull the Mongo database image down and you send in the UI, it created it all for us. So that kind of sets the tone for how all of this is going to go going forward for deploying containers. And now we can set up HTTPS. So depending on how you're going to deploy your Cosmos is really going to determine what you put in here. If you were going to make this public, you're going to use a domain name, right? If you're going to just have it locally, you'll put in the local IP address. That's really going to set the tone for how everything is going to be accessed going forward. So we're just going to use the local IP address in this one. So I'm just going to put that in here now. So just like that, put the local IP address and it's saying here, you seem to be using an IP address or local domain. You can use automatic self-signed certificates. So if I come down here, we've got a choice on how we want to do these certificates. So generate self-signed, supply our own if we had one or use HTTP only over port 80. That's not recommended though. So we're going to use the generate self-signed certificate. And I'm going to hit update. And now we're creating our admin account. It's our first account. The admin account is going to control everything. So this is where we set it up. So we'll give it a nickname. I'm going to use TechDocs. Now the email address function here, if you have, uh, so in Cosmos Server, you can set up a email server, right? Under SMTP. And this is what would send out the password reset emails and stuff like that. If you're not going to set that up, you don't need to worry about putting an email address here. But if you do want that functionality, make sure to put the email address in. I'll show you where you set up the email server once we actually get into Cosmos. Right, I've just set a password, so now I can create my admin account. And there we go. So now we can apply and we'll restart. And it's going to make sure that uh, our certificate and we're accessing everything over HTTPS. Now, the host name you set, if you're using a domain name, that's now how you're actually going to access your Cosmos server. Okay, if you're using the local IP address, you use the local IP address. That's where everything is going to change and get set after this restart. So if you set the, that host name, and you restart and you try to connect it via the IP address and it doesn't work, that's why. Use the domain name you set. So we're going to do a apply and restart. And there we go, everything's restarting. So let's just hit that IP address again. And there we go. So now it's saying this connection is not private. And if we show details, it's just because we're using a self-signed certificate, hence why we get that connection is not private. Depending on what browser you're using, you should just be able to go to like advanced or whatever and then visit this website anyway. Now we can put in that nickname. I hit login. And there we are. So straight away, what we can see is that we have no apps configured at the moment, right? But you can see our CPU of our server. We can see the RAM that's been used. We can see the network. We can also see some URLs on the side. So URLs are kind of like, you know, if you've got your services set up and you've said this is the URL I'm going to access it on, it's kind of checking those and making sure that they can actually be accessed. I don't know where it's getting these 35 areas and 1 OK from, uh, but maybe it will explain itself as we go through. So I haven't actually deployed any containers using Cosmos, but I actually have containers running on this. So if I go under monitoring, on the right hand side here, you'll see they're actually being picked up. So this is giving us that single pane of glass to actually see how our containers are going, even if they haven't been deployed via Cosmos, which is awesome. Now, temperature here is a funny one. So it looks like it's not coming through here. Generally, you actually have to deploy a, um, a service on your actual host for these metrics to be exposed. Uh, otherwise, by default, generally your temperature metrics aren't really exposed. So I would say that there'd be a setting in the Cosmos documentation to get the temperature set up. Now, I'll come back to this section in a second. But again, this is that marketplace where we can deploy uh, so services. We will deploy a service in a second. We'll come back to this. Management under serve app apps. This is where you can manage your containers. Now, not just the containers you've deployed by Cosmos, but also the ones that were initially running, which is a great place, uh, which is awesome. It makes it easy to just, you know, manage it and see everything in that single pane of glass rather than the command line. So here we can update our containers, pause them, stop them, restart them, recreate them, and also get rid of them and delete them. You can get a high overview of the networks, you know, setting that URL here if you wanted to, uh, and you can straight away see the CPU and RAM of it as well. 
So we hit view details. We get a bit more of information around the container, the IP address it's using on the Docker network. You know, if it's healthy, again, some more monitoring metrics. You can see the logs, right? So that's really nice, it's straight uh, single pane. And you can search the logs as well. More details on the monitoring here. Any key events that's going on, we can just see that the container started. You can get a terminal to the container as well. So if I do a new shell, now we're connected. So if I just do like an alias, you know, it's as if I was in the container itself. So change directory into home, alias, you know, we're in the container if we even needed to do any sort of troubleshooting. I'll just disconnect from that. We can see the actual compose of the container as well if we wanted it. We've got the, the actual Docker section here, so we can see the image that's been used. If we want to update the image, change that restart policy if we want. Always restart is, is good to have. Any sort of user, environment variables, you can change all of it in this single pane of glass. The network, change the network mode that we want. By default, it's on default. Change ports, all of that stuff. And also storage, you know, the bind mounts and whatnot. This is that URL section that I was telling you about. So this is where you can kind of tell Cosmos, you know, the the container, what port it's on, what the URL and everything's been used. So it can be all managed and viewed here. Now Constellation is a VPN that they have. So Constellation is a VPN that runs inside your Cosmos network. It automatically connects all your services together and allows you to access them from anywhere. So there's some documentation on this. I haven't actually covered this before. Uh, I feel like I might make a bit of a dedicated video on this. Uh, if you're keen on seeing this, ask in the uh, mention it in the comments below or jump into the Discord server. But again, invite is in the description. And let me know uh, thoughts around this, and I, I, I can cover it if there's enough interest. Again, the great thing about these sort of UI services for managing your Docker containers is that you can have multi-user access. So if I wanted to invite someone, I could just create it, and then I can just put in their nickname here. So let's just say, oh, I was gonna invite Nick, hit create. This will give you an invite link to send to someone. So if they got that link, they set in, and now they can set up their user account. So that's really nice. Again, mine's just running over local IP address, so it would be more like people on my network. If you had exposures publicly, then it would be a publicly accessible link. The open ID, uh, so it's saying here that this is an experimental feature, uh, just being able to add, uh, you know, that open ID authentication on top of your applications. I haven't used this. Um, I don't really like to cover experimental features, especially in a, in a video, because this could be gone tomorrow or it could be drastically changed. So it's hard to keep up with experimental features. So I'll probably just leave this empty. But if you're keen to have a discussion about how this may work, jump into the Discord channel, YouTube comments, and let's talk about it there. Now, the configuration has some key uh, parts in it here. So if we want, we can force multi-factor authentication so the a cosmos server already has this inbuilt but if i pick this it's going to automatically ask us to set up mfa for our own account and any other accounts that try to log in from that point will also be forced to set up multi-factor authentication and if we come down we can also change appearance you know set a wallpaper if we want whatnot and show application details on the home page if we want as well if you want to change that host name for any reason you can change it here let's say if i wanted to change mine to be publicly available i can now put a domain name instead if you don't want it over the default ports, you can also change it here. This is where you set up that email server. So if you wanted to e enable SMTP, this is where you can configure all that for those password resets and whatnot. You can also have some uh, finer controls over the Docker network. So, you know, if you want don't want it to clean up the network and images by default, then you can, you know, enable these flags. You can also choose to geo-block uh, access. So if this was publicly accessible and you don't want certain countries to actually hit your Cosmos server, you can actually block them here. So let's say I didn't want, uh, I don't know, Belgium. You can click that, and now anyone from Belgium would not be able to access. Otherwise, you could actually use this as a whitelist. So everything will be blocked unless the countries that you wanted to allow. So let's say I only want a New Zealand. There we go. It's now restricted to New Zealand IP addresses. And you can actually just default it to the most dangerous countries and it'll auto populate it for you. You can also just whitelist IP address as well if you would rather to do that. And again, here's your certificate settings here if you want to change how any of this is managed then you can do that here so let's actually look at deploying an application as our final thing here so let's say we wanted to deploy let's say i wanted to deploy navidrome let's do that one 
so when you click on the application, again, it's kind of like that app store, right? So you've got Navidrome here, some key tags for the application, what platforms it supports, so ARM and AMD64, which is great. Font color is kind of confusing for dark mode. You can't really see that, uh, but it is showing you the repository links, uh, the image and the compose file if you're keen on those. And it's just a bit of a breakdown of the application itself. So we can hit install. We can change the service name if we want, but we can leave it as default for Navidrome. It's showing you the path to the music. Let's say if you already had a path on your server, you can actually change this up a bit, but we're just going to leave it as default. It's also going to show you how it's going to be exposed. So that host name and the port. Customize, if you wanted to add some extra environment variables that you wanted, then you can add that here. Otherwise, you can leave it as default and also the volumes and mount points and stuff like that. I'm just gonna leave everything as default. And we can hit next. It shows you actually the compose file of how everything's been deployed, which is cool. So you can just get a bit more of a breakdown and, and understanding on how it's gonna be deployed. If none of this interests you, then you don't actually have to worry about it. But now we can hit create. And now you can see that it's gonna create a service. It's gonna pull the image down, which is happening right now. And then it will deploy our container. You would see this from the command line. So you're still getting that best of both worlds. Now it's saying here that we just need the refresh because we're using self-signed certs and that uh, it might go offline for a few seconds while it remaps our Docker ports. And now it should be on our home screen. So if we go to home, there it is, Navidrome. So if we click that and go show details and visit, there we go. We can now log in with our username, uh, create our local admin. So let's just go admin and there we go. We're now in Navidrome, and that's the same sort of process that it's going to be for anything else you would like to deploy. And that is essentially it. And it's just rinse and repeat from there on out. So that is Cosmos Server. Now, if you're keen on understanding any more specifics, let me know, and I'm more than happy to cover or at least just give you an explanation on how it could potentially work. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support lately. If you've made it this far, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to join our Discord server. I've given away two Raspberry Pis so far and I'd kind of do them every month or so. So if you're keen on getting that, then you have to be part of the Discord server to be able to enter. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for all the support lately. It's been awesome. A, again, a breakdown of all of this information will be on my website that breaks down all the commands and how they work. So make sure to go check that out if you're keen on understanding those commands for deploying Cosmos uh, server. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.